And so I obviously started when I was about 12. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, and I have to tell you, I am more excited about this conference than I think I have been of any of the nine conferences that I've been to. So we do it every two years, so that's why I've got nine out of 18. And I'm telling you, the energy, the hotel, the lineup, the organization, the speakers, I am just overwhelmed with gratitude toward every single one of you who took the time out of your busy schedule, sometimes time away from your family, hard-earned money to support us all being able together to, to be together to advance the uh, evolution of consciousness in our culture. And let's just take about 60 seconds right now to ground yourself in your chair. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes. Many of you have traveled long distances to be here. I know for sure we have people from Portugal, Spain, China, London, all over the United States, Canada, <coughs> South America. Just for a moment, resting into your chair and allowing your attention to rest into your body as though it were resting into an old easy chair. Allow the energy of the room to fall upon you just like somebody flipped a feather bed up in the air and it just settled on you ever so gently. Here you are, July 18th, 2019, Santa Clara, Marriott, with about 725 of your fellow visionaries and explorers, all dedicated to various forms of what ends up being the same thing, which is to create a world that is compassionate, thriving, sustainable, innovative, and recognizes the importance of the inner spiritual world as much as it recognizes the importance of the outer physical world, and that you choose to dance between those two worlds in service to a beautiful life for you and your family, but also for the well-being of the world. Allowing yourself to just be here right now. Thank you. Opening your eyes. Thank you. Welcome. So this evening, before the actual kickoff of our conference tomorrow, is about spirituality, astrophysics, and space exploration. And in true noetic fashion, I was sitting around one day about nine months ago, and I had a thought, and I don't know where this thought came from, and it said, you need to do a workshop on spirituality, astrophysics, and space exploration. You need to bring together astrophysicists with clergy, spiritual leaders, because there's something going on where a lot of the people in the science aspect of our culture are dismissive of spiritual and religious and subjective experience, and a lot of the people in the religious or spiritual end of our culture are dismissive of what astrophysics and astrobiology is finding out about the origins of life and the length, you know, the age of the universe. And there are a lot of exceptions to this. Many of you are in this room and there are many more out there, but there's something about healing that divide that needs to happen for the future that's calling us forward to be able to happen. And so we had a scholarly invitational meeting this afternoon with about 16 astrobiologists, astrophysicists, clergy members, spiritual leaders to start this process. And now I'd like to share it with all of you. So each of our presenters, a subset of our presenters, is going to come up and speak for about 10 minutes. And then at the end of that, we'll have everybody up here so that you guys can <coughs> offer your comments, ask questions, and have an interactive time together. Sound good? Yeah. All right, so I first want to really express my appreciation to Bruce McEver and the Foundation for Religious Literacy who sponsored this event. Um, the, Bruce McEver is an amazing man who founded Berkshire Capital and created an incredibly successful, highly principled, valued uh, company that has the most financial transactions of any company that ever has managed funds. 
And at some point in his life, about age 50 or 60, you know, he said, okay, he kind of secretly got to hang out with Joseph Campbell for a couple years. He always had this internal desire to actually be more of a mystic, even though he's literally on, like, uh, Madison Avenue with the Windows office and money, money, money. Um, so he decided to go back to Harvard Divinity School and get his Master's in Divinity. So what he would do is fly from New York down to Georgia Tech every week to teach a class in religion. And then he started to fund projects and he found the Institute of Noetic Sciences and funded a large proportion of our work on living deeply, which some of you guys are familiar with, the transformation study. So he is the person, along with the Foundation for Religious Literacy, who's trying to bring this concept of the idea that astrophysics, science, astrobiology does not have to be exclusive of spiritual and religious explanations for and explorations into the nature of reality and human potential. So I first want to call up Nathan C. Walker, who is the executive director of the Foundation for Religious Literacy. Bruce McEver is like 85 years old and he just called and said, I can't come because I had a bicycle accident. So he's still biking around and breaking his shoulder and things like that. So Nathan, come on up and give us some opening remarks. Thank you. 